<laughs> Hello, beautiful souls. <laughs> We're doing the same kind of intro as we did last time. <laughs> Join us in the laughter. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. We are wrapping up the Order of the Blue Rose Five Virtues videos. So if you're just jumping in in the middle of this, love that you're here. Stop here and go back and start at the beginning, Order of the Blue Rose series. It's so much good information. I don't want you to miss out on one single bit. Uh, we have covered truth, peace, harmony, and love. And the last one to cover is valor. Valor. And valor, strength. Yes. And um, so I have a, a few things. I had only got a little bit from Ascendant Master Melchizedek and uh, some other things that I'm going to present, but it's really going to be just discussing what valor means to, to us, how we have experienced valor that kind of thing. Um, so let's dig in. <clears throat> Aurelia is very um, excited. She's got her background in progress. We're working on, on all things visual. It's a work <laughs> in process. The most important thing is that we hear her beautiful voice and, uh, and she delivers the messages that way, clearly. Uh, my throat's dry. My my nose is a little bit runny. So you might have a little bit of that today. It's just energies, I believe. So we have had a very, very long week. This week has felt like a month. <laughs> I, don't know about, do. I don't know about you, but yesterday <laughs> for sure felt like several days. Um, and we have actually seen, I believe, Valor exemplified this week. And whether you uh, whether you agree with it or not, it's up to you. That's fine. I do interpret the the comeback of Donald J. Trump after assassination assassination attempt, assassination attempt, persecution, lies, all sorts of things. I see him rise in valor. I see that uh, response being a demonstration of his valor, and that is the ex that is the um, exemplification that I'm referring to. Valor as defined is bravery, strength of mind, or personal courage, especially in the face of danger or on the battlefield. Valor can refer to virtue ethics, which is roughly defined as the courage and defense of a noble cause where you have moral character, moral fortitude. Often valor is associated with war heroes and knights, but anyone who faces death and doesn't look away displays valor hence what i said a few minutes ago and most of us luckily i feel like don't have to endure an assassination attempt to realize that we have valor but when it comes up when I, when the moment arises valor is defined and seen in an instant and it can come from the least suspecting people it comes from inside of them it's a strength that they may have never tapped into before and they rise above the event they dig deep and they find their courage their bravery ascendant master melchizedek valor comes easily to you lucy it does not come easily to those of the fey realm, which is the fairy lineage people. <clears throat> the populace of the collective is comprised of about 98% of beings with a fey realm lineage. That means these beings have incarnated in fairy lineages, fey realm lineages, time and time and time again. And so a bulk of their traits that they have with them in this now moment as a human are linked to those experiences as a fairy. Which means that the masses of people that we are constantly engaged with are very excitable, nervous, anxious. They lack self-confidence and they lack approvals because they live in fear. Does that sound familiar at all whenever we're talking about the collective I had no idea that percentage was so high. 
Yes. But it makes sense when you say it. Yes. So when you, when you're, you're like, why is everybody so, you know, fill in the blank, there's really more reasons to it than just because they choose to be like, I, I have encountered so many beings that exhibit some of these traits and they don't want to, it's, it is a pill for them. They want to escape this, but it is a part of their being. It's a part of who they are. And they're able to get clear with a QET session and start to get on top of some of these things, but they're still there. These are, these are soul essence characteristic traits that you're not going to get rid of, but you have to actually deal with. You have to deal with the shadow work involved with the events that cultivate it feeling this way to then learn how to take your power back, not be nervous purvis, not always be looking over your shoulder, have faith and confidence in yourself. So that just takes shadow work, but the traits themselves don't disappear. They're still a part of these, of these people as a characteristic trait. They're not going to face fear or enemies head on. And we see that a lot. That's why so many people get bowled over by stronger energy personalities. So there's been a small percentage of people leading the battle. And I'm one of them. And to exemplify the other part of the percentage, you have Aurelia. Who is some fairy but she's pretty much on top of most of those traits, but she's also squarely in the love and peace category. So the same event can occur to both of us. And my first knee jerk reaction is to go into battle. And her first knee jerk reaction is to what? Not go into battle. <laughs> it's to immediately say, how can we approach this in a compassionate way or in a balanced way? If I have to pick up a weapon, I will, but that's my final decision. Yeah, that's or her last, last, last resort. And so I've learned, I've learned over time <laughs> that the sword and the shield are not always needed first. And so we do adapt, we do learn, we do evolve if we allow ourselves. Um, but understanding why people act and behave and perceive things the way that they do goes a very, very long way, I think, as well. You know, when when someone's not overtly trying to cause harm or or cause issues, it is literally out of their control. Um, it does take on a different context for me anyway. I have incarnated in many lives where my soul contract for that life involved being a warrior. Some of them, Arjuna in, in India, Joan of Arc, Pocahontas, uh, and myself, Andalusia. These are all existences, incarnations that carried a heavy burden of battle warrior type mentality and the majority of our current population doesn't recognize that at all they don't resonate with that type of of response anyway so this is a big piece of the puzzle so how does valor rise up how does valor show itself in a populace of people that are mostly distanced from anything that looks like valor do you have anything on that aurelia one thing you were talking about with going into battle mode i was thinking i notice a lot of people say it's either black or it's white you know there's there's no middle ground and i struggled with that i still do but i've noticed that for me yes there are some definite lines but I tend to see a lot of the gray area. Mm -hmm. I can see so much. Well, so-and-so may have done this because when that may have brought this perspective. And so balancing and so as opposed to battling initially, because where a lot of people tend to show their valor, 
you know, valor doesn't always have to be loud and in your face. It can be very quiet. It can be gentle. It can be the commitment to perform everything with integrity and with truth, regardless of the situation, regardless of the outcome, regardless of other people's reactions. That's one of the notes that came through earlier about valor is, does it have to be in your face? No, it can be soft and quiet. It doesn't have to be bold. It can be, and sometimes it needs to be. Mm -hmm. I think there's a certain level of resolve in those exhibiting valor and that it's the commitment to discover the truth, the commitment to um, discern which side, if there is a side that needs to be given attention to. And, and I was raised by my earthly parents. They believed in, and things are only black and white. There are no shades of gray. And I pretty much got in trouble all my life because I lived in the shades of gray, Mm -hmm. you know, because of grays and they're pretty. Yeah. And it, it's not a rubber stamp scenario. You know, we are multidimensional beings. We, we volunteer to come here to have a earthly experience. And some people have a really wonderful time. I don't know who they are, but I guess they do. (laughs) We're assuming they do. There's gotta be balance. Yeah. And then there's us. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, we have a good time. It just may not always look like it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but there's been always been a resolve. There's always been a resolve. The more that we learn and discover about our own lineage, our own soul lineage, our family lineage, and how far back it's gone, that we, it's part of our family trait that we advocate for the light. And it doesn't matter how many incarnations we have that end in battle that end in different ways that are not pleasant, we continue to come back and, and dig into that resolve of fighting the good fight. And that doesn't always mean shields and swords, but it definitely means aligning to the light. And so um, it, it, that could be your moment of valor. If you've always sat back and not really taken a stand, if you've, if you've just been one to go along to get along. I do ask you, how has that worked out for you? Because the planet, the the culture that we live in is polarized. And uh, I, I venture to say that you have to really, really be completely cut off from the the collective to not have those moments where you're triggered one way or the other. And that's okay, because I think it does, it unearths what we're truly here for. And you could have been ignoring the cues for a very, very long time. And all of a sudden, it will matter to you. All of a sudden, something will come up and it will matter to you in a way that can't even be articulated. Um, But it does ring true as a part of your being, a a virtue of your being. Um, The original meaning of the word virtue, in fact, is refers to military courage or valor and I thought that was very poignant um Carl Sandburg has made the statement about valor that valor is a gift those having never known it for sure whether they have it or not until the test comes so it's those moments where you don't know what you're made of until you get tested and that comes up time and time again as we are guiding beings through their shadow work and they, they are kind of kicking and screaming. They don't want to do it. Um, are they, they're certain that it's going to be a failure. It's going to be a flop because that's all that they're, they've experienced their whole life. And I'm encouraging them to just try, you know, don't predetermine that you're going to fail because that's setting you up to fail. Like go into this with commitment to try your very, very best because progress just means that you're trying and to say that I'm, I've never been good at anything. So why should I try? I mean, that's a cop-out. That's the opposite of valor, right? It is. It's deciding to stay in your comfort zone because it's what's known 
whether it's the best for you, it's familiar. Yeah, it's familiar. It does take strength and courage to say, I'm going to break free from this mold. I'm going to put a crack in it and I'm going to see what's out, out there now. Yeah, it's it's the controllable, like the controlled. It, they want to control things. They want to be able to control their world if everything else outside of it is not controllable. And that's true. However, when you're feeling the friction, when you're feeling uncomfortable, that is a cue from the universe. It's time to grow. Uh, just like a snake shedding its skin does so, so that they can grow and evolve and, and move on down the, the road. Um, they don't stay little and small and confined in that, in that space, they get growing and they're more and more uncomfortable until they break free of that, of that skin. And that's what we're all called to do. We're, we are an evolutionary race and we are meant to ascend from one dimension to the next. Um, no one, no one being that has a soul is ever stagnant unless they choose to be. And they really have to work hard at it because it goes against the way that energy body and energies um, transmute and transform. We're created to evolve. We're created to experience things make a decision and then learn from them and take them down the road. And I think valor is a missed piece in, in the opportunity to grow because uh, again, I think a lot of people just don't see themselves as very courageous. They just don't see themselves as having the stuff that it takes. And there's often times where we get into, um, you know, space lineages or past lives or things like that. And they're stunned that they had these really big past lives. And they, they look at their life here and now and they, because they have believed what has been thrown at them and they go, but me, like, how, am, how can that be me? And, you know, to that, that's a learning curve where you are the human and the name that you have in this life is only for this life. The true essence of you, where your strength resides from all these past lives is your soul, is your energy body. That is the being that is garnering the respect. And that is the being you can tap into as your human and learn from. That's why we call it the higher self. It's a tapping into the, the wisdom and the skills of our past lives. You don't have that in this life without tapping into the wealth of knowledge of the spiritual and the, and the divine but it can either empower someone or completely disempower them because they just feel overwhelmed with the weight of their own past lives. You have anything on that? You were about the past lives, no, but just right before that, there was a note that came, came in, I jotted it down. You were saying oh, so much, so many times people don't acknowledge their courageousness. Yeah. And it came through to, yes, give yourselves the credit, give yourselves the credit for the growth that you've made for the choices you've made in the courage you have shown. It doesn't matter what somebody else thinks about it. If it's a big step for you, or even a baby step, applaud yourself and feel that and realize the growth you're choosing to create. If your family says, nah, I don't agree with that. Peace out. Okay. Is it okay within you? To do that or are you going to step back and that's really really big for i'd say a majority of us going through all of this but yes it was take the time to applaud yourself take the time to recognize the courage that you're showing every single day in every decision that you make big or small doesn't matter be courageous and then i had another note here there it is i was talking about with valor what is the driving force in expressing and embodying valor? Is it rooted in ego or is it rooted in your heart space? I think that's the difference for where people go. Are they choosing to be courageous and valiant for accolades from around? For the right reasons. Or yeah. are they doing that for themselves? Yeah. Is it the ego or heart space? Yeah. Through my, this life, a lot of people, because my soul contract presented opportunities as, at a young age to grow. Um, we'll just leave it at that. A lot of people have told me throughout my life, you're so courageous. 
And I never really identified with that label. I, I just, because it's never been like in my brain, like I'm going to go do this because I need to be courageous now. You know, like it's not a thought process for me. It was always just, well, and, and I've told people before, like I always felt like there was a very big hand behind my back supporting me, but also guiding me. And I do what I do in the moment. It's not, it's not really a cognizant choice. Like I'm just following energy. Like it's just always been when I made those decisions and did what I did, I did them because it was the only thing that I knew to do. And I knew I was being guided, but I also had faith in my guidance because in the moment I didn't know what to do. And I asked for assistance from God and then was kind of propelled forward. And I just went now to say that to some people, they're like, that's so reckless. And that's just so what scary. And that's this and that's that, but not for me. Uh, it was scary to not know what to do. It was, um, you know, it can be daunting to look at a big event and not know where to begin, but then it just takes a little bit of courage to take that step. And we're all being guided. It's a matter of what we do with the guidance. Do we receive it? Do we question it? Do we, do we interrogate it? <laughs> I see, I see a lot of that. Like how, what if, and what about this person? And what about this person? And, and you just have to bring it back into yourself. You know, this guidance is yours on what you're going to do with it. And if you have this innate drive to continue to push forward, that is your valor. That is your courage. And yes, you're to tap into that because sometimes that's all we have. And that along with this enormous faith, it really does open up pathways. It opens up doors of opportunity that if you're just sitting there, what ifing your entire life to death and afraid to make a step in any direction, then you're not really ready. You're not, you're maybe asking for help, but you're not really ready to receive the help. So that's the other aspect of it, where if you're asking for help and you genuinely want it because you want to facilitate change, you want things to look better and be better and all of that, then we have to be in a, in a space to receive it how the divine and how the universe brings it to us, right? Not in the micromanaging type A personality that most people are where they go, well, yeah, I asked for help, but I didn't mean that. <laughs> I need it to come like in an email so I can, you know, make my notes on it and, and do it in a very matrixy way. And that's not how energy and that's not how the universe works. So Definitely, as Yeshua reminds us to get out of our own way, don't be a hurdle in your entire life of, of progress, remove your own hurdles out of the way so that when the divine answers your prayer or your request, that you don't immediately disregard it because it's not what it looks like in your brain. It's not what your brain decided that it was going to look like when it comes back to you. Like those are all micromanaging, controlling type scenarios that really negate the power that the universe can have to deliver an, a, a request to you. Do you have any a sense of control and control is a fallacy. It's false. There's really no control. And usually right up, if you take control, wanting to process everything and micromanage it, when you start digging and undoing those layers, Typically, you'll find the need for approval just right there underneath it. And because you were working for approval, you started to control the things so that you could get the outcome and you could receive the approval that you so desired. And those are a bunch of onions with lots of layers to uncover. And they may have been from a year ago. They may have been from 50 years ago. They may have been ancestral and inherited from another life experience yourself a thousand years ago. Whatever it may be undoing that control that desire the micromanaging you know and allowing some flow because if you don't have the flow and the space for it the universe is going to say okay yes but hands off there's nowhere to put it yeah then choosing to undo all of that even little by little is very courageous because it doesn't look like how you thought it would 
and it won't feel like how you thought it would, but it is going to be better. You just have to choose to stay in that not as comfortable space to allow yeah. that change to occur and then recognize yourself for doing it. Yeah. A year ago, I would have handled the situation X, Y, Z. And now look at what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. You know, pat myself on the back. I love myself and where I have come. It's not egotistical. I'm not saying, oh, check me out. I'm the most awesome thing ever, even though it's true. Right. right. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Just because I could. <laughs> It's true though. And I've seen it demonstrated time and time again, where, um, the, the window of opportunity for the universe is super small because the being requesting, you know, they have this big, awesome request for the universe and the universe is just gearing up to deliver it to them. And then they go, but it needs to come between the hours of three and four on a Wednesday when the sun is at, you know, yeah. And the the universe goes, yeah, they're not ready to receive my gifts. And then the person goes, I've done this and I've done that. And I've planned everything out and nothing has happened. Well, that's exactly why nothing happened. And I do also see that as a huge trait in the collective because they're trained. If it didn't come naturally, you're really pushed toward planning and list and scheduling and like who are you if you don't have a 12 month plan out in your planner and you're like oh I got to do this and if I don't accomplish this then I'm a failure it's such bullshit it's such bullshit I mean it's throw tiring. the planner out throw the planner out just buy some blank notebooks and start uh -huh. journaling your truth and you will become what you were always meant to be and what you have been inside of you naturally, if you allow it. So I venture to, to say that some people's valor has just been sitting on the bench waiting to get called up. Mm -hmm. And it's been there all along. You just have to give yourself permission to go there. And to allow these changes to take place that you're not going to have a guarantee of because there are no guarantees in life. There's too much other free will choice at play to have a guarantee. But you can get a return on your faith. You can get a return on your trust. And you can get a return on, on your positive energy going out into the world. It does come back to you. In many ways, it comes back to you so much bigger and so much better than you could have ever created and micromanaged anyway. So just allow it. You got something? I do. Jotting my notes. <laughs> we're ready. The idea with courage, as you were saying, you know, it's just back there. It's cake in the back seat. Allow yourself to ask, what if? Not what if I fail? Not what if? you know, the car breaks down or something. What if, what if I make this choice? What if I say yes to myself? What if I, instead of doing the dishes and cleaning the kitchen and making sure everything is spick and span and perfect, what if I were to do a hobby, something that brings myself joy? I've really wanted to learn how to paint or golly, I just want to go for a walk in that park I drive by every single day. What if you give yourself the permission in the space? It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be mind blowing. It can be five minutes. It can be 30 minutes. It can be an entire day. But what if you put yourself first? Yeah. You're showing courage in yourself to make those choices that are better for yourself. And then to allow the universe to come in and say, sure. Okay, good. You did that. Well, let's give you this while you're at it. Yeah. And be open to seeing the miracles and the blessings. Magic and miracles happen every day. I need to wear that shirt one of these days. <laughs> we see a lot of, um, a lot of beings that come through getting clear and they, they start to take their inventory, you know, of their vortex and the vortex is basically the, the energy bodies that you have invited in or have invited themselves in and you allowed them to stay. And some of the time it's your earthly family. Sometimes it's work family. Sometimes it's extended family or 
people in the community that you engage with. But when you dig into who and what you have invited around in your, your vortex, the second piece of that is accepting that it's going to change because knowledge of who and what you're dealing with presents an opportunity to make a better choice, to make a free will choice that is in the highest and best for you, for your timeline. And it will not be in the highest and best of other people's because we're not talking about them. We're talking about you. And sometimes the challenge is that the bulk of the people that have really been sucking your energy out of you and you damn well know it, you figure out now who they are and now you have a choice. Are you going to continue to allow this cord of energy to get, just fill them up all the time and leave you depleted? Or are you going to raise yourself up above that mayhem Honor yourself enough, love yourself enough to give yourself a leg up and out of that negative loop, which means your vortex goes from out here to really, really small. But when you do, you're cleaning up space and you're allowed and your frequency can then rise. And then you're going to attract frequency matched souls that are supposed to be with you because they have been with you life after life after life after life. But if you are full and your whole vortex and energy field is full of beings that aren't supposed to be there because you chose them and you kept them because it's comfortable, you don't have any room for growth. So understanding that your valor may come in the moment that you actually choose you. When you choose you and showing up for you, that can be your moment of courage. That can be your moment where you rise above and that only can come from within. I would love to know from those watching what step you have taken or want to take, plan to take to stand up for yourself or to show yourself that you're here and you love yourself and the courage you took, whether, like I said, whether it's a small baby step for yourself or whether it's something huge, I'd love to read about it. If anybody wants to share, please do comment because as you said there, boundaries, it takes courage to set up boundaries. And by choosing to enforce those boundaries, you're showing up for yourself and you're making those choices. Yeah. No one comes to those decisions easily, you know, but it's necessary. It's absolutely necessary. And we are actually rewarded whenever we protect our energy, take our power back and act in a sovereign way with integrity. That's when we're rewarded. None of us are rewarded for allowing ourselves to just be spread so thin across all different platforms, work, home, social, that there's nothing left for you. You don't get rewarded from the divine for that because that's not sovereignty and that's not healthy. That's not what, that's not what we're here for. That's what the, the narrative likes to tell you so they can keep pulling your energy from you and keep you weak and keep you shredded, but that's not really what we're here for. So yes, if you have tackled this or you want to tackle this, comment. I would love to engage with you. Um, Do you have anything else to wrap this up on Valor? I really don't. (laughs) Other than thinking about how it is one of the the petals with the rose and the virtues together, how they all go together. Valor, peace, love, harmony, truth. (laughs) how they all interact and when you show step up with valor with courage you're standing in your truth you're loving yourself you're providing yourself elements of peace thereby leading into more harmonious experiences in your life as a quick example that's perfect that's perfect and they definitely all lean on each other feed or fed from each other Without one of those five virtues, you really do fall short of the full picture and the strength that we all can possess within us to then open up so much expansive beauty that we haven't even thought about yet. And I, and people like to say, well, I can't wrap my brain around that. My response now is because it's not for your brain. It's for your heart. Your heart can open up and take in so much more of the yumminess of life than our brain our brain is just i love that yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about the yumminess now. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have to make sense up here. Does it feel good here? Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, I haven't encountered one person that I gave that intuitive device information to, and I gave it to them to decide that said, I never thought about that. They are usually like, yeah, I kind of figured <laughs> because they've been feeling it and they've been ignoring it. They've been choosing to look the other way. They've been making excuses and all the things, but it's time for those excuses to end because we really do have to be our own best friend. We have to be our own caregiver. We have to show up with compassion for ourselves. And that is where everyone falls short because it's so much easier to give it away to someone else than to look in the mirror and go, I have been ignoring you and I have been ignoring this for a really, really long time. And it is not serving, you know, us well. So let's take care of this. Let's, let's take care of this. Me, the divine, my guides, the higher self, my soul friends, let's, let's help each other out. And that's where as a human race, as humanity, that's where we're led to go. So with the five virtues, truth, love, peace, harmony, and valor, we can lean on each other just like those petals and find a way to really embody the divine and embrace the golden age of miracles that we are in. Yay. Can't wait. <laughs> so exciting. So we will wrap this up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and check out our other series. They're all listed in the in YouTube playlist as well as violetlotusenergy.com. You can sign up for your QET session. And once that's integrated, you can get all the specific special activations, one-on-ones with Aurelia or myself and all sorts of yumminess. other things that we offer. Lots of yumminess. <laughs> anyway. Thank you for joining us today and I'll see you again next time. See you later. <laughs>